Okay. Good morning, children. Today we'll be moving towards to civics, chapter number two. That is basic features of the constitution. Okay, I'm writing the name of the chapter out here. Basic features of the constitution. Okay, in the previous class, I had already explained you about the uh, <clears throat> number one feature. Okay, number one features of the constitution, which I have told you, it was a uh, written and one of the lindiest constitution. As I have told you, uh, it really took a great time for the constitution framers to frame the constitution. Something around two years, eleven months, more than that. And it is one of the lendiest constitution because, as you know very well, this Indian constitution had adopted uh, most of the important points, special important points from the other constitution, the constitution of other countries. Thereafter, I taught you about federal in structure and unitary in spirit. Now, the third point, the third feature, okay, the third feature that we are going to learn today is cabinet system, we call it. Got it? cabinet system or we can call as a parliamentary parliamentary form of government now let's see what do we find in this feature okay in this parliamentary form of uh, government or can be called as cabinet system now it is due to the indian constitution okay it has established a cabinet system of government both at center and in the state. See, in the center also, the cabinet system is there. And as well as in the states, you can find the cabinet system. Got it? Similar like in England. Okay, similar like in England, the executive here, the executive head of our country, he is just responsible to the legislature. Try to understand. Okay, similar in England also, the executive is also responsible to the legislature. Whereas in India also, the executive head is the responsible to the legislature. So, the Indian constitution has clearly established a cabinet system of government. I told you, one at center as well as in state. Though the president is the head of the executive, real powers are vested with the cabinet which is responsible to the Lok Sabha. One point to be noted out here. See, we say, who is the head of our country? We Usually we say the president. Yes. The president is the head of the executive, okay? He is only the head of the executive. So, we can pre call president as a nominal head or a constitutional head, many months, uh, president like. Nominal head or a constitutional head. Actually, the real power, okay, the real power is completely with the cabinet. And that cabinet is responsible to the Lok Sabha. When I say the cabinet is responsible to the Lok Sabha, here, the real power is in the hand of prime minister and his council of ministers is it clear so don't get confused out here the president is the head of the executive okay he is the head of the executive the president is the head of the executive but the real powers are vested with the cabinet which is responsible to the lok sabha the executive here is not at all powerful but is responsible to the legislature and is part of it see in this cabinet system in this cabinet system, which I am telling you out here, in this cabinet system, the president or let's say the executive is not at all powerful. He is only responsible to the legislature and he is a part of it. Okay. The real power is not vested in the hand of the president, especially in the system called cabinet system or parliamentary form of government, what we call. Is it clear? So here I told you actual power have been vested in the, with the cabinet, which is responsible to the Lok Sabha. Now, let me tell you some of the features of the parliamentary form of government. See, some of the features of the parliamentary form of government as established in England, which is established in England, okay? Some of the chief features of parliamentary form of government. In a parliamentary form of government, the executive is in constant touch with the legislature. The members of the cabinet or the council of ministers are also members of the parliament. Number one feature of the parliamentary form of government. Number one feature, try to understand. In this system, in the parliamentary form of government, the executive should always be in the touch with the legislature. 
एग्जीक्यूटिव इज कंस्टेंट इन टच विथ लेजिस्लेचर got it executive is in constant touch with legislature and the members of the cabinet or we call the council of ministers are also the members of the parliament so remember whoever are the members of the cabinet or the council of minister which i am telling you this council of ministers are all members of the parliament that is number one feature number two feature point number two in a parliamentary form of government the real powers lie with the prime minister try to understand this is the most important point that has to be noted down in this system in this system okay in this system as i've told you the real power the real power okay lies with the prime minister number two feature number two feature of the parliamentary form of government in this type of government in the parliamentary form of government the real power is vested or let's say the real power lies with the prime minister while the president as in india or the king of queen as in in england are only a nominal head of the state remember so if i talk of india okay president of india or if i talk about england okay if i talk of england that is queen king or queen of england okay when i talk about the president of india or king or queen of england this they are just what we call nominal head they are just what nominal head of the state so when i say okay who is the head of the head of the country president man sandami okay president is the head of the country but actually he is just a constitutional head my lagi banyale he is just a constitutional head he is just a nominal head actual power the real power is completely in the hand of the prime minister second point second important feature that has to be noted by you all the real power lies in the prime minister that means the prime minister has the real power in the parliamentary form of government point number 3 again in a parliamentary form of government the ministers are responsible to the prime minister as well as to the legislature or the parliament see and in this one in this parliamentary form of government another most important thing is that the government of ministers okay again in the parliamentary form of government the ministers the ministers are responsible the ministers are responsible to the to the prime minister okay as well as to the legislature as well as to the legislature and parliament point number 3 the most important feature the third feature here in the parliamentary form of government okay in the parliamentary form of government the ministers are all responsible to the prime minister is it clear ministers are all responsible to the prime minister as well as they are responsible to the legislature as well as they are responsible to the parliament what i mean to say is that if if one in the parliamentary form of government okay if the vote of no confidence try to understand if vote of no confidence is been passed in the parliament then the existing ministers everyone has to resign from their office even the prime minister also has to resign from the office if the vote of no confidence is passed in the house seen in the light of the above principle india has a parliament form of government see when we look all this okay we can clearly state that we can clearly say that what type of government we have in india parliamentary form of government is it clear in india we have a parliamentary form of government here the members of cabinet as well as the prime minister are the members of parliament see in this form of government the whoever are the members of the cabinet and even the prime minister they are all the members of the parliament first they have to be the members of the parliament once they will be the member of the parliament from there only they will be elected as a ministers or a prime minister 
you are the executive is part of legislature in this form of government in this cabinet system or let's say in the parliamentary form of government executive is just the part of legislature which i have already explained in the previous paragraph secondly the president of india is only a constitutional head maila agine bhandi halek the i had already told you before itself only secondly we can clearly state that president of india he is just a constitutional head is it clear here the real powers lies with the prime minister and his council of ministers see that means the real power the actual power is completely in the hand of the prime minister and his council of ministers thirdly the prime minister are responsible to the prime minister sorry the ministers are responsible to the prime minister as well as to the parliament but not to the president remember maile yaha third ma ke bandai chu try to understand the ministers they are all responsible to the prime minister the ministers here they are all responsible to the parliament but they are not responsible to the president is it clear are you understanding in this form of government i am talking about in the parliamentary form of government what i mean to say is that here the executive when i say the president he is just a part of the legislature the president of india is just a constitutional head in this form of government the real power is completely in the hand of the prime minister and the council of ministers and the third point that has to be noted down that the ministers are responsible to the prime minister they are responsible to the parliament but they are not responsible to the president is it clear so this is all about what we call the cabinet system okay now in the next point the next point what the constitution has given us constitution i'm largo ke dio i i told you the cabinet system this is what the constitution has given us now the fourth point remember the fourth point a secular state constitution has established india as a secular state it is in the indian constitution okay it is the indian constitution who had clearly declared it has get a made a declaration that india will be a secular state what do you mean by secular state then see secular state means it is a state where all the citizens okay all the citizens of india will enjoy equal rights irrespective of their caste color creed religion or sex here what i mean to say is that there is no discrimination between the colors in india in the country called india the citizen are not being not discriminated because of their colors they are not discriminated because of their caste they are not discriminated because of the religion they follow here everyone is treated equally and everyone will enjoy equal rights for that purpose in the indian constitution had declared india as a secular state now let me come to the point anybody in india anyone in india any citizen in india can practice any religion he or she chooses and no distinction would ever be made on this account see that means no distinction should be made in religion that means if i want to follow hinduism i can follow hinduism no if i think no i'll go and follow christianity it is my wish jainism it is my wish is it clear no one can stop me by following any one of the religion in the country called india is it clear the state has no religion of its own yeah in india there is no state religion likewise we can find it in pakistan okay pakistan in pakistan okay the state religion is islam is it clear got it the state religion is islam we call it but in india here in india we don't have state religion is it clear got it so no one would either suffer or enjoy special rights on basis of his or her religion that means here it doesn't mean okay hinduism hindus are there so hindus should be go, given more priority to uh, priority than christianity hindus should be given more priority than islam no it's not there these things are not happening in india in india every religion is treated equally is it clear 
either you follow Jainism, Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, whatever it is your right, you can follow that. There is no discrimination between any religion. Here, none of the religion would be given any preference. There isn't any religion which, which will be given special rights. It's not there in India. That is the reason why Indian constitution has declared India as a secular state. Everybody is equal before law and enjoys equal rights. See, before law, everyone is equal. Is it clear? Every citizen of India is being treated equally before law. And they all enjoy equal rights, no matter to which faith, which caste, which color, which sex he or she belongs. Is it clear? Whether he is a male or a female, whether he is in black in color or in white in color, whether he is from higher caste or a lower caste, whether he is Hindus, Buddhists, Christians, Jainism, whatever, no discrimination is made. Everyone is being treated equally before law. Is it clear? Got it. So that is the reason. We say India is a secular state. There is no dis discrimination between any religion in India. Every religion in India is being treated equally. No privileges, no ex extra facilities, no special rights have been given to, given to any religion in India. That is the reason why India can be declared as a secular state. That is the point number four which the Indian constitution has given to our country, India. Okay. Now, I'll move towards to the point number five. Welfare state, Bansavo. Point number five, welfare state. Now, see, another important thing which the Indian constitution has given to our country, India, is the several direct principles of state policy. The Indian constitution has laid down several directory principles of state policy with the main aim of guiding the government to strive more and more for the welfare of the people. See, in Indian constitution, okay, Indian constitution, it has been clearly written that the directory principles of state policy should be followed by each and every state of India. Okay, what is the main aim? Why? Why should we follow directory principles of state policy then? Here, this policy, okay, this policy which we call the directory principles of state policy will guide the government, government like guide Gertzer, so that the government will look after more and more of the welfare of the people. People go welfare like here at the government according to the directory principles of state policy. In the words of LZ Khedekar, one of the greatest historians. He clearly stated, the direct principles are ideals towards the att attainment of which the government will endeavor. See, it's, he has clearly remarked, he has given one statement. If, if the government will follow this principle, okay, the direct principles, okay, then the government will achieve a lot in future. The government will look after the welfare of the people. Each and every people of India will be looked upon in a very, very proper way. Is it clear? For the welfare of the people, for the betterment of the people. The government's main responsibility is not only to serve the citizens from internal dangers and external invasion, but also to look to their general welfare. See, point, one thing that has to be noted now. It's not the only responsible of government to look after the citizens from the internal danger or external invasion. Internal danger. Afni country is a danger by any internal danger, we call it. External invasion, that means if any other countries, like if China, if Pakistan, if Nepal, okay, if they are attack attacking India or if they wanted to invade India to save the Indian citizen, you must be in government responsibility. These are not only the responsibility of the government. See, it is the duty to save the citizens, see, number one. It is the duty of the government to save the citizens from the internal dangers and the external invasion. But also, apart from this, the government has to look after the welfare of the people. General welfare, okay, what the people are in need. Like, for example, in today's time, you know very well, okay, today a lot of pandemic has been going on, okay, COVID-19, coronavirus is going on. Is it clear? So now, it is the duty of the government, okay? It is the duty of the government to save the people from this disaster. As we know very well, 
okay uh, india had uh, just jumped up to the fourth position okay in the largest uh, uh, the positive cases which has been uh, found in india okay and maximum is especially maharashtra delhi okay they are in this uh, two states okay obviously a lot and lot of people are being suffering from this disease okay from this virus covid 19 corona virus we call it now but you be like this time in this disaster okay it is the duty of the government it is the duty of the indian government to go and to save the life of each and every individual that is the reason why mr modi had specially announced the lockdown for many years isn't it, it the lockdown started from march 24th something else i think so still today we are in lockdown and slowly and slowly the relief is going on but also still okay this virus is spreading in a such a way so government has to take an initiative okay you might be watching in the news uh, yesterday only uh, mr uh, amit shah home minister he had a meeting with uh, the chief minister mr crazy kejriwal in delhi okay so just to how can you break the chain to virus ko chain lai because he will break or no is it clear so the government is doing that is the duty of the government to the government le goreko hunu parcha is it clear so it is not only i told you it is not only the responsibility of the government to save the citizen from internal dangers and the external invasion but also it is the responsibility to, to look after the general welfare of the people as far as possible it should provide adequate means of livelihood see these are the things what the government has to look after the people see first and the foremost thing adequate means of livelihood to all its citizen that means i belong to india my livelihood should be good my livelihood should improve like for example livelihood means i should get at least twice of food to eat to survive is it clear are you understanding the living standard of the people should improve a lot so it is the duty of the government to provide adequate sufficient means of livelihood to all its citizen encourage equitable distribution of the wealth see this is another most important point that has to be noted down the government has to make it sure the government has to make it sure that the distribution of the wealth should be equally distributed let the wealth not only go in the hand of some few rich people it's not that the wealth should be equally distributed that is the reason why the social in the society the society will improve a lot so equitable distribution of wealth the government should prevent concentration of wealth in a few hands which i told you just now the wealth should not go in the hand of only the few people is it clear the government should make it sure that the wealth of the country should be equally distributed look to the health of the citizens another most important thing see health if there is a health there is a wealth there is a proverb for example yeah, i am i'm very healthy person okay i'm a very healthy person so because of my health i can do very hard work and i can earn a lot of money is it clear by my hard work but if my health is not good if my health is not good so i i should be there i should remain in the bed for years and years for months and months so there is no earnings from my side so that is the reason why the first priority health lai dinu parcha is it clear so the government has to keep in a view that the health of the citizen should be in the good conditions next important thing provide employment to everybody i mean yeah sentence me likhe sir provide employment to everybody according to my point of view i don't think so it is possible for the indian government to provide employment to each and every individual to each and every citizen of our country it's not possible if this was possible today there would be no poverty in the country if this was possible today there would be no there would be no any dockage in the country there, if this was possible then you could not find any terrorist in our country see though it is the duty of the government to provide employment to everybody so that the living standard of that particular citizen will improve to promote agriculture this is very important as you know very well 
India is an agricultural country. Most of it has been said over 70%, more than 70% of the Indian population, they directly depend upon the agriculture for their livelihood. This point should be noted. So for that purpose, it is